Thanks for watching this video and subscribing to our Cloud9 ERP Solutions YouTube channel. So in this video, we're going to talk about Acumatica 2020 R2 and the new Shopify functionality built into the Commerce Connector. So you can see here, I have a Shopify admin panel up. Now the first step in getting started here is we go over to Apps and we'll manage our private apps here and we'll create a new private app. Now when you're done with that, you'll get your API key and shared secret and all those things and you'll copy and paste that into Acumatica. And that's done. So if we go into Acumatica and we go into our commerce connector, you can see here we now have a Shopify store. If you've seen our previous videos about big commerce, you know that we've set up big commerce stores and we have a good video there on how to set that up and how it works. But if we click on Shopify stores, the first setting is our connection. So we go here and we put in our URL and all the credentials we received when we created our private app. Now over here, you have the ability to select what store plan you have. So with Shopify, like many other products, there's different variations on the plan you subscribe to. So here you're gonna to wanna to align what plan you have so that the connector can work properly and provide the available options that match your edition. Over on Entity Settings, we turned all of these settings on, but keep in mind that these settings, some of them have bi-directional capabilities. So for example, customers, if we create a customer in Acumatica, we can also push that out to Shopify. This is very helpful for business to business type commerce shops where you want to only allow customers that you authorize to be able to purchase products. And just continuing on from the top, here's our stock items. This will export any stock item information that we've set up in Acumatica. So if we go to inventory and we look at our stock item profile, we'll open up our Acer computer. So Acumatica will push back all the information for pricing, the description. If we go to attributes, you can see the image here. We'll push the image over. But also you have an e-commerce tab. And the e-commerce tab gives you the ability to define whether or not the item is visible or showing up under featured or just not visible. The store availability. There's a preference in the commerce connector to determine this. So you could choose store default here. However, per item, you could decide, do I wanna show this item as available track quantity or do I wanna show this item when available, but I don't wanna track the quantity. So no numbers. And then on top of that, if the quantity becomes unavailable, we could show it as pre-order or simply disable the item. Over here, you could put your media URL. So for example, if you have images and they're stored on a server, you could paste the URL here and then decide, is it an image or a video? And based on that, Shopify will show that image on the item's product page. And then you have other things such as the page title, your meta keywords, and so on. So if we go back to the Shopify store settings, over here we have the ability to define when a new customer is created, what customer class is used. So here we've defined key customer. You also have the ability to use different auto numbering. So in Acumatica we have numbering sequences and you could select one of those numbering sequences to start numbering any new customers that are created. Same thing goes for customer locations. And for guest customers checking out, we can use a standard customer and pick it right here, and the order will be created with that guest customer. Under inventory settings, we have a new preference to define whether or not we want to export the sales category information. We put that under inventory settings now. So you have the option to simply set up your categories in Shopify versus setting them up in Acumatica and pushing that information out. 
And previously we talked about the stock items and how you can show availability. Well, if we set that to store default, it'll use these settings here. When the quantity's unavailable, we do nothing. Let the customer check out. But you can set it as pre-order or disable the item. This can be very helpful for having customers buy items that are in stock. It can increase customer satisfaction, but it can also reduce the possibility of customers seeing items that you normally don't track in stock, but maybe that are high margin. Over in order settings, this is the branch that we're going to use with all sales orders created. You get to find that there. This is the order type that we're using. So in Acumatica, we have multiple order types to categorize all your different orders. So you may have an order type for this particular store. You may have another order type for other stores. You may also have an order type for orders that are keyed in from phone calls that are made to your business. And this is the return order type. Acumatica uses a different order type for handling RMAs. You can find that here. And then when we show discounts, how are we going to show them when the order comes in? As a line discount or a document discount? You have that preference here. Over here, we can map the different shipping methods that are shown in Shopify to the delivery methods, the ship vias, that are in Acumatica. So for example, any domestic shipping that's called default in Shopify is mapped to FedEx ground and so on. So any new delivery methods that you put in Shopify will show up here and then you can map them accordingly. Same thing goes for payment settings. All of the payment methods that are in Shopify, you'll see those here and you can map them accordingly. So let's get started with some synchronization. In 2020 R2, and this goes for Big Commerce as well as Shopify, we now have a different way of syncing. Previously, there was a fetch data and there was a sync data. And now Acumatica has broken that into prepare and process. This improvement is designed to make it a little bit easier to push out your synchronization. Before we get there though, notice under entity settings. We have the ability for some entities to push that data back and forth in real time. So for example, customers, we can import and export them in real time. Additionally, sales orders can be pushed in in real time. When a customer places an order, no need to schedule that sync. You could define it as a real-time import or export. So to get started, let's go to Commerce and let's click on Prepare Data. So you can see here all of the entities that we've turned on for synchronization will show up here. Now if we go over and synchronize our stock items, you'll notice we can do that through an export. So if we check this and hit the prepare button. Now if we go to process data, you can see here we have selected our entity, stock item only. And if we select a few items to push them out and hit the process button, the connector will push these out to the website. So now we'll have these stock items online based on their preferences in the e-commerce tab of the stock item. Notice if we go back, we can see all of the prepared and processed records. Acumatica is going to keep track of this and let us know the results of our synchronizations. Next up, we'll go and sync our product images. We'll change our entity here to product images. You can see a few are available. And now if we go to our website, you can see here our websites come up. We don't really have a template in place. We'll go over to our catalog and you can see the items have been synced with their images. So we'll click on this laptop. Add it to the cart. Do a checkout process. 
to do a checkout, I added myself previously. So you can see my email address and address are all in the system. I have a test credit card. So Shopify's remembered me for easy checkout. And I'll hit the pay now button. Now you can see here we have an order. It's order 1002. Has my information up here, what I checked out. Your order's confirmed, that's our status. And if we go back to Acumatica and click prepare data, we'll change to sales order, prepare. This is of course, assuming you don't have the real-time sync on. If you turn the real-time sync on, orders will come in without a schedule. Of course, we could schedule this, but they'll come in without a schedule automatically. We'll go to our process data. Sales orders here. You can see the order that's just waiting. Now we'll open up sales orders. And you can see our order right here. Now one of the things I like to do is to add a column here. Is if we open up this order. The Shopify order number shows up under external reference. So it's nice to be able to do a lookup when a customer calls you because all they know of is their order number 1002. Now, if we go back to Acumatica and we type in 1002, you will be able to find it through the global search. Now, if we go back to the store, and we click on our account history button. You could see our order is here. It's been paid. It's unfulfilled. We go back to Acumatica. Create our shipment. Take a look at our ship settings. Our ship via is FedEx One. You can shop for rates. You'll also notice under packages, we have a medium box. This is auto selected based on our preference for that item. Acumatica has auto packaging. Having said that, we need to put this item in the box. Acumatica doesn't require that as a default. But to work with Shopify, you do need to have items in boxes in order to synchronize your ship details over to Shopify. So I've added that here, and now I'll confirm the shipment. Notice Acumatica added the tracking number, and if we have our PickPack device hub set up, the label will automatically go over to our Zebra printer and get printed out. But now we have the shipment, it's confirmed. And if we go back to our prepare data and we select our shipment entity, you can see it's already selected here, and we prepare and we go over to process data and select shipment and we process that. You can see our shipment's been updated over to Shopify. If I go back to my account history page and I refresh, you can now see my order's been fulfilled. If I click on this order number, you can see the item. That's why we put the item in the box. You can see this particular item has been placed into this box with this tracking number. And Shopify gives us the ability to track this directly. So that's it. That's our Acumatica Commerce Edition. Now with the Shopify connector, in Acumatica 2020 R2. We went through the setup. We adjusted our settings. We synced a sales order, and then we shipped out that sales order and we alerted our customer to the fact that their order has been shipped. If you have any questions about our Acumatica Commerce Edition and all the changes that have been made with 2020 R2, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing to our channel and have a great day.